Case 623 by Danny Yu. Chapter 48. When Johanna turns a year old, the bumbling, overly cuddling caregiver is exchanged for an agent too old for the field, whose loyalty is unquestionable, and who has been with Hydra since the 70s. Pierce observes on the video feed that will be saved only for Zola's servers, and smiles in satisfaction when Agent Forrester retells old apps for bedtime stories, when his stern use of positive reinforcement have the milestones coming fast and firm. Agent Forrester is stern but devoted, and Johanna works hard for the smiles and hugs she gets. Her toys are blunted knives and blue guns. By the time she's a year and a half, she speaks like an adult and runs without ever losing her balance. By the time she's two, she knows the most important parts of Hydra's history and philosophy by heart. By two and a half, she can reliably hit a target 20 yards away. Tony Bipega yawned, almost stumbling over his own feet as he made his way down to the workshop. The hot shower he'd taken had done nothing to wake him up, and it had done nothing to put any heat back into his bones either. The nightmare still played through his mind as it did most nights now. It was the same nightmare it had been ever since Jamie had been a baby, in the kind of way that a dragon was the same as a gecko with a penchant for fire. But now that nameless, faceless mother come to steal his babies had a name and a face, and Susan O'Neill haunted him. Every night, every bit of sleep he managed to catch, she was there, snatching his children. Sometimes she'd do terrible, unspeakable things to them. Sometimes she'd turn them into monsters, into perfect little reflections of herself. This nice dream was still stuck on a loop in his head, running over and over and making his hands shake and his head feel full of cotton wool. Somehow he still managed to make it to the workshop without braining himself, grateful for what was probably the thousandth time that Bruce Banner not only existed, but was also running breakfast and temporarily homeschooling the kids. Tony wouldn't have had the first idea what to even do without him. Anthony! Jocasta said just as soon as he'd collapsed into the nearest chair, cup of coffee cradled protectively between his hands. Anthony, she repeated, finally succeeded in bringing his thoughts out of their depressing little loop. I believe I may have found a potential teacher for Maria. Tony blinked before focusing on the hollow displays lighting up in front of him. Even though he hadn't really done anything yet, he still let out a slight breath of relief. If someone could help teach Maria to manage her strength, some of her guilt and nightmares would just maybe fade. She would become more difficult to take advantage of, and he'd be able to finally enroll the kids in one of the dozens of NYC schools that had offered admission following his little statement. All right, he said. Show me what you got. He spent the next 15 minutes finishing his coffee as he watched YouTube videos and read articles about a new superhero calling himself Spider-Man. The guy was shabbily outfitted, but the webs he was shooting were sophisticated enough to suggest that the guy was either extremely intelligent himself or had a genius backer. And even discounting those webs, several of his feats suggested that despite his short stature and skinny limbs, the guy was at least as strong as Steve. Which, yeah, if whoever he was checked out as a good guy, he seems like quite possibly the best choice Tony had available right now. Do we know who he is? He asked. He stays masked in all the videos, Anthony, Jocasta said. However, the angles of the videos of a certain uploader suggest that no ordinary bystander could have possibly caught them. The Count, Tony asked, belongs to a Peter Benjamin Pucker. Jocasta said, 14 years old, resident of Queens. Guardian is listed as May Riley Packer, his aunt by marriage, who works as... Wait, wait, wait. Tony held up his hand, frowning. Parker, any relation to... He had to take a breath there and force back the memory, suddenly threatening. Two of the agents killed by Steve and Natasha's great WikiLeaks adventure had been named Parker, hadn't they? Peter Parker is the only son of Richard and May Parker, both working as S.H.I.E.L.D. field agents up until their deaths a year and a half ago, Jocasta confirmed. Tony swallowed and had to work that much more determinedly to keep the memories at bay. He couldn't have saved everyone, that just hadn't been possible. But how he wished he'd been able to save just a few more. So you think the Parker kid is Spider-Man? He forced himself to ask. I'm almost certain, Anthony, Jocasta answered. Any kind of personality assessment, Tony asked. He's highly intelligent, Jocasta said. A plus student inclined toward the sciences, biology and chemistry in particular. 
He has placed high in several citywide science fairs. He scavenges, repairs, and resells technology, apparently to help his aunt pay the bills. According to his school records, he's quite good-natured and has a history of getting picked on. I'd say he's a good kid, Anthony. Tony nodded. With what little they had to go on, that's what he'd say as well. Still, a face-to-face -face was going to have to be in order to properly make an assessment. Get the car ready, Fry. He instructed the other. I, I, yes, boss. Friday answered immediately. Anthony, Jocasta said, might I remind you that you are wearing sweatpants at the tank top? Tony winced. Yeah, I suppose I should do something about that, he said. Also, probably wait until the kids get home from school. Either of you got a suggestion of how I can pass the time until then. Miss Paz has a few things she'd like you to go over, boss, Friday reminded. Tony let out a nice, long, theatrical groan before forcing himself to get to work. Tony reached out and rang the doorbell in front of him, more than a bit grateful for the sunglasses that hit the doubtless deep, dark bags under his eyes from view. He rang again before realizing that the doorbell wasn't working in the first place and gave the door a firm knock instead. A few seconds, and then he heard rushed footsteps from the other side of the door, followed by the sound of someone stumbling and catching himself. Tony winced in sympathy, but also, quite frankly, had half a mind to turn around. If the kid was that fucking clumsy, how much help can he be? Still, before Tony had the time to make that choice, the door banged open and a kid stuck out his head. He had wide brown eyes and messy brown curls and looked somehow even younger than 14. The kid blinked and then his eyes widened even further. Tony Stark! He breathed, voice, I is squeaky! Then he blinked again, clearing his throat. Mr. Stark! He said, managing to sound slightly more collected. I, uh, I wasn't expecting, well, anyone really, but you specifically. I definitely wasn't expecting you. Tony smiled, oddly charmed despite himself. May I come in? He asked. The kid spent a moment shifting from foot to foot before stepping inside. Another clearing of the throat and then, Of course, Mr. Stark. I just, that is to say, it's not really, well, it's not a Manhattan penthouse and I'm sure it's fine, kid. Tony said, walking past the kid and through into the apartment. Mr. Stark, the kid said, picking at the cuff of his sleeve. Why are you, that is to say, I don't mind at all, but I just, uh, why are you, you know, here? I mean, I didn't really think Queens would be your style at all. It's not usually, Tony said, and suddenly he found himself floundering. He hadn't really had much of a plan coming here, except to feel the kid out. But how was he supposed to do that if he didn't have any pretext to actually be here? Listen, kid, he said after a moment. Stark Industries sponsors the NYCSEF this past year. Well, we do every year. But what I mean to say is that we also keep an eye on the top finalists. Not even a lie that. Science fairs and scholarships were how they got some of R&D's best and brightest. And your project was really promising. Also, not a lie. Tony had a chance to look it over this morning, and it was damn impressive for a kid that age. I know you didn't win, but... Tony shrugged. I know it's a bit early, but we'd like to offer you a scholarship over the summer vacation and access to our labs in the meantime, as well as a mentor who help you out with your projects. And that's... Yeah, that's it. Also not a lie. Well, not entirely. Kid had definitely been on their short list for students to consider, and if he hadn't, he should have been. Kid's eyes widened impossibly further, and he sucked in a sharp breath. That's... Mr. Stork, that... I don't even... Tony grinned. Just say thank you, he instructed. Thank you, Kid said, almost breathless. Then he cleared his throat again. His voice must be right in the process of breaking to give him that much trouble. Do you usually show up to Duncan's in person? He asked. Tony shrugged. I may also have a separate job offer for you, he said. Tell me, Kid, if you witnessed the situation where a little boy hit another boy... And a little girl the same age, but much stronger, stepped in to defend him, but used too much force. What would you say to the little girl? Kid blinked several times. Then he shrugged. I guess I'd tell her it was good that she stood up for her friend, but she had to be more careful. If you're stronger than everyone around you, you always got to be careful, or you can hurt someone without meaning to, and even the meanest kids don't deserve that, even if you want to punch their teeth out. Tony let out a breath he hadn't known he was holding. He knew he was taking a giant leap of faith here, but he had a damn good feeling about the kid, and the answer was exactly what he'd wanted. 
not just Steve's patented good on you for standing up the bully spiel, but also the rest of it to balance it out. I need a babysitter sometimes, he said. And you, well, you're not a girl, but you're that kind of age where a lot of kids take babysitting jobs, right? I've got two kids, I mean. They both need someone who can keep up with them intellectually. They're used to Bruce at me, so there's that environmental damage. And then there's Maria. She's... Tony took a sharp breath, shut his eyes behind the shades for a moment to gather himself. She was born with the super soldier serum, he said at last. She's about ten times stronger than most kids her age, possibly more. She's a couple times stronger than me. It's only going to get worse when she gets older. She desperately needs someone who can relate and who can help her figure out how to control it. The kid bailed right up. Why would I know anything about that? He squeaked. Sonny sighed. Kid, just don't, he said. I know. I'm not going to tell on you. And there's a little girl who really needs your help. Which, yeah, I know I'm emotionally blackmailing you, but I'm also offering to pay you. What's the going rate for babysitter slash tutors these days? A hundred an hour. Kid's eyes widened. Mr. Stark, I... All right, all right. Tough negotiator, aren't you? Tony said, inwardly smiling, a hundred and fifty an hour. I won't cut into your school time and homework is a valid excuse. I'll also help you upgrade that disgrace you'd probably like to call a suit. Kid blinked several times, cleared his throat. When do we start? He finally squeaked. If you don't have any homework today, call your aunt and let her know you got a job. Tony said, we'll swing by the tower now and you can say hi to the kids, if that's all right with you. Kid. Peter, probably, if he was going to be a permanent fixture, grinned at him before frowning. I won't suck at it, he said. I'm not used to, well, little kids. Tony grinned. Neither are Jamie and Maria, he said, reaching out to pat Peter's skinny shoulder. You'll do fine, Spider-Ling, 